everybody and welcome back to the Girl Like a Bookworm. So today I have a spring unhaul video. I really was hoping that this was going to help me like narrow down some books that like I own that I haven't read yet that I'm not interested in. But for the most part a lot of these I've read. But I mean there's a couple that I haven't so it, it's probably worth it. But I was taking a look at my shelves and I was like you know what like time to do some cleaning. I've been hauling a lot of books lately and I feel like I need to reorganize my bookshelves and I just was looking at my shelves and I was like there's some books on here that I just don't need anymore. So I haven't decided what I'm doing with these yet. They'll probably just go to my local library or possibly find a way to get them to Patrick's students for another like giveaway thing or something. Um, they're going to a good cause so we'll just say that. All right. My two stacks are super tall, so I'm praying I don't, like, drop any of myself. So let's just get started. So the first one is one that I read forever ago at this point. This is Reality Chick by Lauren Barnholt. I bought this at my local library for, like, 50 cents once. And I liked it at the time. It was about these kids. They were, like, in college. And basically it was a reality show. And it was fun. I've held on to it because I was like, remember, that was fun. And, like, I'm like, girl not fun anymore <laughs> so decided it was finally time to find a new home plus it's probably super dated at this point then this author I liked for a while I like two of her books and they don't match so there's really no point in keeping them um I read them once I'd never read them again um and that's Torn Away and The Hate List by Jennifer Brown I really enjoyed both of these um but I just feel like I'll never reread them I don't see myself being like here Sydney 20 years down the line. I don't see her reading these, but you never know. Again, I got, I think I got this one from Book Outlet back in the day. Or maybe the library did. Oh no, I got it at the library. I got both of these at the library for um, like a dollar. So I read them. They did their job. Um, and then I've got By Your Side by Casey West. She was an author that I thought that once I read one, I was going to want all of her books. And I've read one and I've never picked up another one. Um, this one was fun while I read it. Um, I think I read it during a contemporary thon about two people who got locked in a library. Um, and it was cute, but I just don't foresee myself rereading it anytime soon. Um, and I never ended up picking up anything else by her, so I don't need it. Um, this book is The Wanderers by Meg Howery. And this was a book that I thought I was buying another book. I thought there's two books called The Wanderers, and I thought that's the one I was getting. And then this came, and I went, this isn't the same. So I just tried to read the first page, and I feel like such an idiot for some reason. I don't know if I'm reading another language or what, because I don't understand what's happening. Like, it just seems like it's trying to be flowery, and I just... I bought it by accident anyways, so at this point, it can go. And it was a book outlet purchase, so like it's not like I could have returned it. Um, so yeah, that was my fault, and it can go. Then a bunch of books that I have read, but I don't remember what they're about, so I don't know why I'm keeping them. We've got The Irresistible Blueberry Bake Shop and Cafe. I remember really enjoying it. I remember thinking it was cute. I got it from my library. Don't know what it's about anymore. So if I don't remember what it's about, it must not have been too good, because I don't remember. <laughs> Same thing with these two. I got them from Book Outlet. Um, Shot Through the Heart by Matt Cain and The Strip by J.J. Salem. I remember them being fun. This was quoted by J.K. Um, not J.K. Rowling. That would be weird. Um, Jackie Collins, who I used to love. And this was a, like, thriller, I think. I don't know. I don't, again, I don't remember what they're about. So why would I keep them? Because I don't care about them. Like, if I don't even remember, like, a single plot point, it must not have been as good as I thought it was. Or I at least got my enjoyment out of it while it lasted. Um, then we've got Now That You Mention It by Kristen Higgins, which I feel silly getting rid of because it is a signed copy, which is why I bought it from Target a million years ago. But I have never once been like, hmm, maybe I'm going to read that book. So if I've had it for years at this point, and I haven't once been like, hmm, maybe I'll pick it up. I think it's time to go. When did it come out? 2017. I've had it for almost three years. Time to go. 
Um, Pretty Little World by Elizabeth Laban and Melissa Depina. Depin um, this one was one that I got during Amazon's like Prime Day where everything was like really cheap and this was like 50% off or something like that. It was really cheap and I remember seeing it on someone's channel but they put it in their channel as a I really enjoyed this as an unpopular opinion so then I was like every time I look at it I'm like but what if I'm that unpopular opinion now um I am the popular opinion who doesn't like it so every time I see it I never pick it up because I always think about that in the back of my head like I'm gonna hate this because the popular belief is that I'm gonna hate it so I have this unintentional bias towards it so I think it's gotta go Then we've got Love and Other Mistakes by Jessica Kate. I got this through the Fiction Guild forever ago. And I just, again, I've never been interested in picking it up. Um, even when I got it, I was like, oh, okay. Like, but I don't think it's going to happen, unfortunately. Um, and then we've got something that I'm kind of shocked that I'm doing. Okay, so we're getting rid of The Other Boleyn Girl by Philippa Gregory. I'm never going to reread this thing. It's a beast. But then I'm also going to get rid of the entire series because, one, the covers don't match. Because I remember hauling this when I first started my YouTube channel. The very One of the very first books I ever hauled was The Red Queen. And then, so I read The Red Queen. I read The White Queen. Oh, actually, The White Queen was the first one I hauled, not The Red Queen. Um, so The White Queen, The Red Queen. We got Lady in the Rivers. And then... They decided to go crazy, and they made this version of the Kingmaker's Daughter. And then they decided to have the White Queen, the White Princess kind of look like the TV show. And then we got the King's Curse, which, like, again, totally does not match at all. This is the only one I didn't read. This is the last book in the series, and I just never read it. It's, guys, it's, like, 600 pages and as much as, like, I liked this time period, and I was really excited to get to this one, because this one's the first one where we finally deal with Henry VIII, but I just, like, don't care. Like, I look at it, and I get mad that I haven't read it yet, but it does nothing to make me pick it up. So I think that it's just time for it to go. It's taking up an entire bookcase cube of space, and I just, they've got to go. They've got to go. Then we've got The Last Affair by Margot Hunt. Um, this one was a book talk after dark with um, Kenja and Shelby. And unfortunately, none of us really liked it that much. I think Shelby still gave it four stars. But for the most part, like, we all kind of gave it like two and a half, three stars. So I just don't feel like the need to keep it. Then we've got... The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. I feel like I'm kidding myself by keeping this on my shelf. Um, I've read three other Lisa Jewell books, and I really haven't liked any of them. But I still picked this one because I had heard kind of good things. But then one of my friends from real life read it, and she didn't like it. Or she couldn't get through it or something. And I just, I feel like I'm kidding myself. Me and Lisa Jewell need to break up and just call it a day. Um, we've got The Neighbors by Hannah Mary McKinnon. Um, this one I liked. It was okay. I thought it was going to be a thriller, and then it wasn't. And then I just read her newest release, Sister Dear. Again, looked like a thriller, and then it wasn't. So I just feel like Hannah Mary McKinnon just isn't for me because I'm going in with the wrong expectations for her books. So, unfortunately, I'm going to get rid of this one. Um, the Party by Robin Harding. Um, I really liked the arrangement. And then we read her pretty face and it was kind of meh. And I have a bad feeling that this one's also going to be kind of meh. Because this is her first book, like book. I've heard some good things. It doesn't match though. So I'm kind of just like over it and don't want to read it. Um, I was originally going to possibly read her newest book, The Swap. But I've also kind of heard meh things about it. So... I don't know, because I also I had heard things uh, meh about the arrangement, and I liked the arrangement a lot. But I just, I'm too scared to put my heart into this one and not get what I want out of it. So, 
that's out of fear, not out of dislike, I guess. Then I have What She Knew by Gilly or Jilly McMillan. Um, I read this a long time ago. I got it from my library for like 50 cents. Um, there's a Zillow ad in it, <laughs> apparently. Um, I just, I don't need it. This is the sequel. It was a signed copy. I got it from Book Outlet. And um, let's just say this irritates the bejeebers out of me. Um, they're a series following the same detective, but it's been so long since I've read the first one that I just feel like I have zero interest in this one. I am keeping her other book because, one, it's hardcover and gorgeous, and it has to do with, like, a podcast. So I'm really excited to see what that one's like. But for some reason, this just isn't clicking with me. I think it's another, like, kid goes missing, and I just, I don't know. I'm over it. Um, we've got Saint X by Alexis Schlotkin. I ended up trading for this one. I was supposed to originally get it from Bookish first, but then it never showed up. So then I traded for it, and then I started reading it, and I just... It's not clicking. I used points to claim it right away from Bookish first without reading the intro, which was silly, because the intro was available to me to read it, but I was so anticipating it that I didn't care, and the writing style just doesn't do it for me, so... Unfortunately, I did a waste of a trade because I don't even like it. Um, three books that I have recently read and just, they're going to go. And I do feel bad. Like, I hate getting rid of my Book of the Month books because they are so stunning, but I just don't need them. The Sundown Motel by Sim S Simone St. James. I just don't care anymore. Um, Sydney. Oh, I'm going to have, like, a black eye later. That hurt. City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. I ended up giving it four stars, but it's not exactly what I wanted. It's gorgeous, but it's just going to take up so much space because it is big, and I won't reread that one. And I get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert because I gave this book one star. Um, but I know so many people love this book and gave this book five stars, so I know someone will be really, really excited to get their hands on it. Um, it just wasn't for me. Then another collection I'm shocked that I'm getting rid of is my Sophie Kinsella collection. Um, I've read four out of the seven of these and I've had the other three, oh, eight. So I've read five of the eight of these and I just, I'm not going to reread the ones that I've read and the ones that I haven't read I've had since Patrick and I lived in the apartment, which was over almost three years ago at this point. And I've never once been like, hmm, I'm going to pick that up. So I think my time with Sophie is done. So we've got, I've got your number, which I've read and liked. Um, 20s Girl, which I did not read. My Not So Perfect Life, which I did not read. The Wedding Night, which I did not read. I really wanted to read this because I got it right around when I got married. And I thought I would read it, and I didn't. But it's what it is. Remember Me, which I did read. Finding Audrey, which I did read. My two favorites, Can You Keep a Secret and The Undomestic Goddess. But again, I just don't perceive myself rereading them at this point. And they all don't match. And they're all just taking up a ton, a ton of space. So they're going to go back to the library. This series makes me kind of sad that I'm getting rid of it. Um, I'm going to get rid of the Abby Glines field party series. This is the most recent book. This is Making a Play, which I probably should read, but again, I have had zero interest in it. I pre-ordered it last year and then just never got to it, and I was already feeling like by book four that the series was being dragged out, and I just saw that they're releasing another one, and I just feel like this story is done. This is following a football team and they're kind of like love interests and they all like kind of have their own special problems. Like the first one had a girl who was mute um, and like the guy was dealing with like his father dying or something like that. Like there was like something tragic in each story and I was just like by the end I was like okay I think we've been through all the friends but like new friends get introduced and then the new friend has to have a story and I just feel like it's, it's just too much. And I'm over it. And I don't want to read this one because if I read this one, I feel like I'll have to buy the next one. And I just I don't want to anymore. Um, so, yeah, they are stunning, though. I'm trying to find book one. Yeah. 
Until Friday Night was book one. Under the Lights was book two. After the Game was book three. Losing the Field and then Making a Play. And again, somebody will love these and devour them. I would have loved them as a teenager. I think just now I'm not in that headspace anymore. And then the last ones that I'm going to get rid of, um, we've got Serious Moonlight by Jen Bennett. I'm keeping Alex approximately because I just remember reading that, I want to say right at the summer that I got married. I remember reading it during a readathon and it like that I did like one of my very first vlogs. So I feel like I really want to keep it because I just have memories attached to it. This I did not really enjoy, which then kind of made me never want to pick up Starry Eyes. Um, and I just don't care. <sighs> why Contemporary just isn't calling to me lately. And then the last one I'm going to get rid of is Heroin by Mindy McGinnis. This book was very good, very dark, and I just feel like I'm never going to reread it. Um, heroin in general, um, is a trigger for me, um, to read about. And it was already hard enough to read it once. And then I was just picturing having it on my shelf. And then one day, like, Sydney asking me what it's about. And, like, I know I'm not going to, like, block her from the world. But I just feel like I don't want that to be, like, her first experience being like, what's that, mommy? And then me being like, oh, also, by the way. <laughs> like, So I just feel like it's something that other people will enjoy. And I enjoyed, I talked about that in my review, that I enjoyed my experience reading it, even though you can't really enjoy something really dark like this. But, and it's really an important, impactful read. I just don't necessarily want it on my shelf anymore. So yes, those are the books that I am unhauling and getting rid of. Um, it's nice to do some spring cleaning every now and then. It feels good to get some books off my shelf and get some more space for some new books that I'm going to love and devour. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down below and I will see you guys really, really soon. Bye everybody.